Hi, my name is Justin Miller and I am here with Barry Owen. Barry, thank you for joining me today. Good to see you, Justin. Barry, I want to talk to you today about latency when it comes to live streaming. Can you tell me a little bit about latency and where it comes from or what it is specifically when it comes to live streaming? Sure. Uh, with live streaming, you know, latency is generally referred to as the time it takes you to capture an image on the camera, deliver it across the internet so a viewer can view it on their device. Obviously, there's lots of things that happen in between. A lot of those things can affect the overall latency. Anywhere from how you encode the images off the camera, how you process them in between, and how you distribute it, particularly when you need to distribute it to many, many people. Well, certainly when you're talking about latency and you're talking about those parts in between, protocols come into play. Uh, there are many protocols out there to choose from. Some have more latency than others. Can you talk about that a little and tell me maybe why some of these protocols have more latency than other protocols? Yeah, absolutely. So honestly, it's usually in the name of efficiency. So the major protocols now tend to be HTTP-based streaming protocols. Those protocols deliver video in segments or chunks where they can easily distribute those chunks onto caching servers of a CDN, and that same chunk of video is, gets delivered to up to millions of people. It's a very efficient way to scale live video. There's some drawbacks to that. Obviously, you don't want a chunk to be a millisecond long or you'd have gazillions of chunks out there in the world. So the chunks tend to be a, bit, a little bit longer, you know, two, 10, six seconds, somewhere in there. Um, the length of the chunk determines the overall latency at the end in most cases. Typically, as you generate the chunks of video, let's say they're six seconds long, the player is gonna want a couple of chunks before it starts playing because it wants to be able to go fetch the next chunk before it runs out of data from the first chunk. So it's constantly capturing maybe the second or third chunk down the road, meaning it's playing, in this case, six, 12, 18 seconds of video before you kind of hit the live point, if you will. So do all types of protocols use this process? No, so there's, there's HTTP-based streaming protocols and there's non-HTTP protocols, right? So you used to have Flash. Flash was based on RTMP, which was actually a real-time protocol that was just sending you a stream of data. Well, obviously that required a plugin in the browser to be able to process it and the days of plugins are gone. So now we've moved on to things like WebRTC. WebRTC is a really interesting, it's an open source standard, it's built into the browsers, it's relatively lightweight, especially on the playback side. And you know, there are challenges with it for sure, but it provides a very low latency viewing stream. You know, it tends to use UDP where it can, it can use TCP if it must, um, but it sends just streams of data. It's not sending you chunks, which allows the, the player to just consume it as it gets it and play it as fast as it can. Okay. so. What situations really require this type of real-time streaming? I always kind of say latency is like ice cream, right? The lower, everybody thinks they want tons and tons of ice cream. They want low, low, low latency. You don't always need it though. So you gotta be careful. You know, choose, what, choose wisely for what you need. Um, certain use cases, you know, anything that's tied to a real-time event, like an auction, sports betting, gambling, um, you know, you can think of others. Um, those use cases probably lend themselves to a direct need and a better experience when the latency is super low. Obviously, if you're watching a movie or if you're watching many live events, right? People, people streaming live events will often think they need the lowest latency possible, but it's not always the case. You know, you surely, when you're watching a live sporting event and you have a second screen, maybe you have Twitter or something else going on, you want the latency as close to real time as you can because you don't want to be interrupted by your, your neighbors screaming because they're, they're, they saw the tweet go off and you know the touchdown score. But in, all, in many cases, depending on the event, you know, a live broadcast of a play, does latency matter that much? Probably not. Um, would you rather have super high quality and super high stability and super high reliability? You're always going to make some sort of a sacrifice to drive one thing down. And in this case, if you're going to drive latency down, you know, it's very hard to maintain the super high reliability, the super high scalability and the super high quality 
as things change. So you, right. you have to you have to pick your battles. Well, I'm sure when it comes down to it, as you've just mentioned, many people do want the lowest latency possible. They really do want to have real time streaming at scale. You know, uh, streaming to hundreds of thousands, if not more than that, around the world. If they do want that, what's the best solution today in order to achieve that? There's been a lot of progress with low latency in the last three to five years. There's certainly things like low latency Dash and low latency HLS that are leveraging the HTTP protocols to drive the latency down there. And while you're starting to see those deployed, there's still a bit of a moving target with standards being drafted and player and CDN compatibility and things like that. You're also seeing a lot more use of WebRTC. Um, there are people who have now been able to kind of crack the code on efficiently scaling WebRTC to larger and larger audiences. And that's something Wowza became very interested in. We've been working on just such a real-time streaming product that is now going to be WebRTC based and scalable into the millions of users. Great to know. All right. Well, thank you very much for your time. We definitely appreciate having you here. Thanks for having me, Justin. All Come right. back anytime. Appreciate it. For those of you who are interested in learning more about real-time streaming at scale, please contact us at Wowza. Thanks for watching and happy streaming.